Would you like to show me quickly a homework or just maybe you can ask if you had any questions or any confusion or uncertainty? So to clarify, um, you're going to play with 3D wrist motion. Yes. With intonation. And, and that's it. Or are you also going to try to <clears throat> imagine every sound when you play? Uh, I thought that intonation and imagination are kind of, uh, cannot exist one without another. Or I, am I wrong? Well, they can. When, I, when, when hmm. I intonate, I actually imagine the sound. Okay, so let's, it says actually a very good question. So let's just clarify that. When you internally sing, you will feel obviously the pitch in your throat and you will feel a singing effect uh, in your mm -hmm. sensations. But with sound imagination, it's more about the clear texture of the sound that you imagine. And right now, we're just operating with a string group of instruments, right? From mm -hmm. C up, it's um, violins, from C down, it's cellos. So it's a more more clear and particular mm, Im imagination of, of the texture of the pitch where with intonation we're just talking about intonating the pitch and that's the difference when we imagine we imagine timber not just the pitch exactly also important to very uh, to, differ to differentiate these things about sound imagination and intonation which are when you imagine the notes, um, you imagine them with sound movement M grisando, like one note gradually goes to another one. What intonation does, it adds a sensation of resistance and that vibrato that you, uh, you get as a result. And that's the difference. You do not imagine the sounds with resistance. I, I think I can do three things at once. So I can do movements, I can imagine, and I can um, intonate. So let me play exercise 26. I have already played this, but now I will play it with some imagination, intonation, and correct movements. I definitely like that. I could feel how you were pre-feeling the touch and the next note and hence you were controlling the sound. Very nice. Next. Mm -hmm. And when you practiced you were taking those four bars and you were repeating a few times to navigate all your sensations in a much more uh, exact and clear way. I still maybe it's because well, yeah, I, don't, I, I think I, I should have said this, but yes, because when I, I need to show this, maybe I have this little shaking sensation, uncertainty in my hands. But yes, yes. It, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a general anxiety in our mind when we show something to someone else, mm -hmm. which obviously we will talk about later in the course. We all I know this. Doma было лучше. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's like... <laughs> Like when I was going to, to my professor in conservatory, we have always open lessons. So it's like we don't have a certain time, we will just come when we come and we sit in the classroom and watch the professor teaching another student. And like nine out of ten would say, oh, oh my hands are a little bit cold today and um, <laughs> yeah, I played at home much better, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and the professor did not take it well. <laughs> he was like, stop complaining and play, you know. <laughs> but obviously that's not the way to deal with it. But I'm very aware of this, that when I would show something to my teacher, I would lose maybe 50% of, of what I do at home. But even though, it was good. 
Um, did you have any questions about this? Um, I, th I think by f uh, so far, no. So Good. I just have the clear idea of what to do next, how to practice this. Good. Could you show me a quick elbow motion and exercise? Oh, yes. mm -hmm. This is good. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're ready to start our new topic today. Yeah. So I'm going yes. to talk about the posture and the arm weight, <clears throat> how to feel arm weight, how to feel it through singing, and how to transfer it to the keyboard when we play. Lots of things to cover. So posture. <clears throat> so let's just discuss um, main elements of correct posture and why do they need to be that way. Let's talk about the, the bench, how high or how far you need to sit from the piano, away from the piano, in front of the piano. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, uh, especially when we learn these new sensations of arm weight and, and correct posture, firstly we need to have our stool, our bench, high enough to be able to transfer the weight through arms to the keyboard. So if it's too low, our elbows is lower the surface of the keyboard and so it's impossible to transfer without inter uh, interruption this flow. So it's aligned with the gravity, with the natural gravity. Yes, and the gravity is the key. Yes, mm -hmm. And we're this. gonna transfer, so if your elbow is a bit too low, especially in the beginning when you want to grasp that sensation of arm weight, you will just feel a little bit more challenged because that weight will stuck in the lower part of your body, which is here, for example. Later, again, um, as soon as you get that actual feeling of arm weight, it doesn't really matter how high or low you sit. I mean, generally, just a general knowledge, um, it's much easier to play octaves or chords when you sit higher because of the angle of the hand the higher your hand is the easier it is to reach the octave or big intervals you don't have to stretch it that much if your hand is lower you have to stretch more to reach the same octave so for for chords and octave texture yes it's definitely better to sit a bit higher but not but too other than high. that yes. well not not too high yet, but just you will feel where you feel like your hand are not stretching that much. Okay, what about the distance? But when you sit too far, you will have to naturally uh, keep your torso more, you know, in this like 30 degree position to reach the keyboard, and oh. that will create tension in your lower back. So we want to mm -hmm. escape any tension in our lower back. And the good way to sit is when the upper arm is right in the middle of your torso and that's the way to check it's not here it's not there it's in the middle it's aligned mm -hmm. with the middle of your torso okay good well since we were talking about lower back pain what else can cause low back pain in let's say bad posture Mm, maybe when our knees are too close to each other, so we just need to keep our legs relaxed. Maybe just like... <laughs> okay, so when we feel tension, when we hold tension in our thighs, thighs. here, and when it's one reason and another reason, if we try to keep our back straight, but no, mm. we don't know the right way, so we're actually artificially just pushing the shoulders back and keep this one. I struggled, if you look at my 
uh, maybe seven years old performances. It's like I really have big pragip. I don't know how to say in English here. And then my ass is like... <laughs> Lord doses. <laughs> pragip. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, to avoid that, so let's come back to the back. So, what would be the right way to keep our back straight without hurting uh -huh. low back? Uh, I, I remember this uh, good advice, just in the initial position, you see it like nobody sees you. Just feel, feel relaxed. See how you... So that means you sit a bit slouched. Yes, a bit slouched. You feel comfortable. Yes. You don't feel any tension and in the back. Yes. Yeah, yes. And then gently you're just rising your head up and this brings a natural activation of deep core muscles and they just start to support your whole body. Very good. Yeah. So you let the top of your head gently lead your back up. So you sit, relax, and then like from the top of your head, someone is pulling you up and look what's happening to your back. And I start, you know, uh, using this as well when I walk. So when I want to walk straight, I don't just put my shoulders back. I walk with relaxed back, but the top of my head is gently up and that aligns the whole body which is beautiful and works perfectly. Okay, so when we play, it's very efficient. Try not to move huh. yeah. Yeah. and keep Staying it steady. Still. Why? Still. There are actually two good benefits to it. Uh, the first benefit that's very, very good benefits. Well, when you practice every day, you just uh, getting used to this position that you're in front of the piano is uh, just the same position every day. So when you do the sleeps and you just, the muscle memory just remembers where to go. Just. It's so much like easier this. for muscles not to get confused about the distance. So the accuracy level, you just get it simply in a very easy and fast way. So it's yes. beneficial for accuracy and. And the else? next beneficial as well, you. Well, you have this uh, integrated, I like the word integrate. Mm -hmm. Well, you have this integrated posture and when you play, you just, you don't need so much effort to express the intonation through playing. So just relaxing and you just, you can. And why? It helps to express your feelings in a more accurate way as well. So for example, just imagine you are playing this interval and you want to express so much. Now imagine that all the effort and energy that's supposed to go through here and directly affect just this part and trigger in exact way muscles to adjust the touch and time and energy to produce exactly the sound you want and exactly the time. Now imagine that in, you're doing it together with the movement of your body. So the energy actually goes now your body is expressing what you feel not your fingers not the touch so you know sometimes you can see the person is playing and he's moving so much but you're like i don't see music behind it i don't feel it <laughs> it's because he he's he has his intention not correct but the way he is expressing it is in a wrong way so in a way it helps to not to splash out the energy and direct it in a very pre precise way to exactly a place where it, which is connected to playing the piano, which are fingers and finger muscles. All right, so still torso, the top of the head, gently leading it upward, good. What is happening with our arms and legs generally? We already mentioned that um, mm -hmm. our legs, our Ties, it's good to keep them a bit loose because that will affect tension in the legs, will affect tension in the lower back. Okay, so loose legs, loose legs. What I also didn't mention in leg, 
many of pianists right now practicing with digital pianos. Now, the pedal in, in digital pianos is not always fixed like in grand pianos. And so, what I also from my own experience, I found if you not bringing your legs forward enough. So if, you, if my legs are more in this position, my pedal is somewhere here, so even if it's relaxed here, that angle create pressure and you will, well, uh, you might st start having trouble with your knee. You might start experiencing mm -hmm. aching just because you're not doing it, you, you're doing everything right, but it's just because of the angle is like that. So instead, mm -hmm. try to move the pedal more forward and so make sure that your leg is more in, in a natural, straight position when you play, bo bo both of your legs actually, because mm. you're gonna use left pedal if you play on the grand piano at some point, so just keep it there um, by default. So generally just straightening your hands, or oh, legs. Straightening your legs. Under straightening the your legs. That help will help to avoid pain in the knee, yeah. So but, that's uh, for me, it's it's very great problem because I have um, a pretty tall uh, height. Height? I don't know. You're it. tall. No. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm 196 centimeters, and when I sit, oh sit, my god! Sit front, <laughs> yes, and when I sit in front of the in front of the grand piano, my knees is always just I cannot. I don't know what where I can get them <laughs> so just in my digital piano I don't have this problem because my keyboard is pretty high so my knee is can go there but on the 90% of for all grand pianos and pianos my knee is somewhere there so just I have to do something like this or just go so just for tall, tall pianists I think this is, it's not it's a topic that deserves is worth to be <laughs> Mm -hmm. A separate topic, what to do to a pianist in front of piano. Yeah, with a grand piano it's easy because the pedals in the grand piano are much deeper than uh -huh. upright mm -hmm. or fixed digital. And so in this way I'm actually grateful that my uh, pedal is mobile so I can put it in any place I want. It's, it's really helpful. Mm. And so even, even, even if you sit on the correct distance, you're able to strain, to lengthen your legs, and right now they're kind of coming out behind the keyboard, but this is where my pedal is, and so there's no pressure for the knee. What about arms? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just make, need to make sure that we are not collapsing these two torso. So Why would that happen in the first place? Um, when we relax, when we slouched. Oh, when we slouched, so yes. It's slouched? naturally, it's the, there's Ouch. a tendency when, when yes. Yes. Uh, Igunov said this mm, uh, nice metaphor. I just don't know how to say it in English. I, I, I know this new word, armpit, armpit, but I don't know. The air, well, сквознячок под мышкой. So the air through the armpit. The air. And Igumnov said that. Igumnov, mm -hmm. yes, it's his expression. Mm -hmm. and okay, so uh, so the draft, the draft under the draft. under the armpit. Draft mm -hmm. un under the armpit, mm -hmm. just like a uh, air 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 pillow, and you have mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Yes. Um, what I also didn't mention in my book, and it's good that we discuss it now. Um, is shoulders. I mean, I would say two students out of three would always say, my shoulders, I so much, there is so much tension, what do I do? And so again, we want to include it in the whole system of posture. So what I suggest is that when we talk about that we need to have loose hands, as well as loose thighs and legs, we need to register where the arm actually starts. And if we really think about it, the arm can start almost from the back of your neck through your shoulder belt and like this. So it's almost like 
this is the length of my arm. So when we talk about loose arm, we include the shoulders. I was guilty so much, was holding so much tension. My shoulders were always all in knots, the muscles, and obviously rising shoulders, lifting shoulders up, especially when we're too emotional. Um, again, it's hard to deal with it if it's not in the system. And later we're going to talk about today how to include posture in actual system of playing so you would not compromise musical or technical part, right? So let's clarify. So sit in a comfortable way, a little bit slouched. Gently bring the top of your head up. That also, basically, actually, that will also eliminate this horrible look of pianists when they go like that, and then there is these things on top like that. I mean, it's not only, it's not good, okay? So when you bring the top of your head gently up, this will help you look like, you know, Yu Jia Wong, just nice and straight. That's a, that's a very good example of how a healthy pianist should look like. Not just aesthetically pleasing, but also it's, it's, uh, it also affects, I mean, it's, it's not just for outside look, it's also how you feel inside and you feel much more confident and in control when you sing like this rather than mm -hmm. <laughs> that, you know. Alright, so, steady torso, gently up, and the last thing, make sure that the legs are lengthened and it's all relaxed here, it's all relaxed there. And the arm starts from the back of your neck through your shoulders. Here we are. That's our question. That's it. So now on um, why and how can we integrate our favorite word, posture into playing. So like I said before, we would not compromise how many times you're playing and maybe the teacher will tell you oh, sit straight or something like this and you're losing phrasing you're losing all the musicality that you want to express because all you focus now is the back and you actually start playing worse right and when you start switching back to music you start moving again because it's impossible these two things are not connected in playing so how do we connect these two through intonation and weight very well not even necessarily through even arm weight because we have not even talked about this today but even with starting with intonation you can already connect it but yes eventually yes to arm weight as well so when we sing with resistance and glissando we also need to be physically aware of sensations in our posture you know and when we play, we intonate, but at the same time, we feel uh, intra, in, intras, intra perception, <laughs> interception, right? How uh, the, the, the sensations inside our body. And interestingly, mm -hmm. interestingly, that the voice, the timbre of the voice is changing, it's become more deeper. Well, it's all so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, if we have this a little mm, background tension, uh, 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 we, lo we lose uh, this en energy, we spend uh, this energy uh, to maintain our posture mm. and that's why we start to constrain our vocal cords oh, and more wow. deep. Yes, more more kind of, uh, what is the word? Co uh -huh. Yeah, it mm. is, but it also comes from this stability that the posture brings and this uh, also kind of safe place of knowing how to control your posture mindfully rather than uh, with compulsive tension, yeah? Yeah, you're you have right. this, you, you have this, ba uh, uh, apora, apora. Exactly, that's the word I'm, I'm looking in English, but what would, the, what would be the word? Uh, oh, I just went to, to Google Translate <laughs> now and... <laughs> it's like you're resting uh, on something, yeah? Resting, yes, resting. 
Well, uh, Google Translate says the word support, but... Mm. I, think, I think rest support would be the closest one to that. Rest, resting and support. We have this support by this... Our bones supported this... Our pelvis, our torso, our deep abdomen muscles that mm -hmm. cannot constrain with conscious. Well, I, th I thought about this um, today's topic uh, and um, I just want to say that I know that we have um, receptors in our muscles that are helping us to control consciously. But uh, this uh, deeper level of muscles they are not able to control consciously because they don't actually have these receptors. They just um, are able to be um, affected by pressure and gravity. So they react to pressure, to gradual pressure. I have a, a one friend of mine who is fitness trainer. He told me that, yes, uh, this is uh, true. We can... Um, affect this deeper level by very slow pressure slow pressure I remember Elisa Safarova told me try to very very slow uh, start to I don't know how to say squeeze no squeeze squeeze, okay, squeeze, squeeze your um, wrist but very slow with sensation like you dive into maybe it's just like sound texture uh, sound texture like going, going deep, 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 deep into this sinking effect. And, and you start to feel that how your spine is start to react to this. Not fast, because when we do fast, when we do fast, um, our um, reaction would be immediate and the, uh, the effect will not be perceived. But if we do it very, very slow, but Mm, gradual and in mm, in constant speed we can uh, just um, affect those level and that's why it's important to feel this uh, seat bones because they what what are they do they just support by this constant pressure from the floor from the bench mm -hmm. and our back is natural become to getting to respond to this I remember this exercise she told me just uh, with uh, squeezing your fist very 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 slow with feeling like just um, uh, squeeze your fist kindly kindly it's uh, very connected to emotional world this tonus muscle tonus fix with feeling emotion of kindness well yes yeah, it reminds me of how I make my stretches and exercises because it's so boring to me just to exercise. So I would just imagine that each movement, like from right to left, is my intonation and <laughs> the distance to which I move is my, no it's my note. And sometimes I would do it in G major, forte, piano, you know, and I would really... Yeah, I tried this too. I tried this too. And that was yes, such a... I. I could really feel how that changes the whole work of my muscles. I feel like they work in a much less stressful way, in a more natural way. I just want to say that if this is true, then that's why it's very cool to have a teacher who is not a superman, who's not a, who has not superpowers, because he went through this and he know all the pain he went through this and he uh, and um, uh, accomplished he w he won he won the battle and now he can show you i definitely have it. huge compassion yes and also knowledge that oh not knowledge it's, it gave me compassion but also certainly that what i teach will help because it helped me so these two things yeah as so you know uh, the uh, japanese word sensei is mm. built of two uh, to science and the first is previous I mean sen previous so I say is life so the life the the person who lives before you and know the path 
and now he can show you the path. That's why he is sensei, he, mm. the person who lives before you mm. and, and knows the path. Mm. And here's the apora. <laughs> apora. Rest yes. and support. support. Yeah. Mm -hmm.